Okay. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for making the time. So we're going to do this the cool young people's way. Can you please introduce yourself and the significance of why they need to listen to you for the next few minutes? Uh, I hope they're going to listen to me. I'm Fritz Buschermacher, by the way. Uh, my second time in Sarawak in Kuching. Uh, love to be here, love to be back. And I have a little bit of background in IT, in AI, and also how we're going to keep it safe for everybody. So in what capacity are you here for? Uh, I'm here as the chair of the Institute for Accountability in the Digital Age, uh, which is a lot of words, but basically it's, a, uh, it's an organization looking at how we're going to keep technology safe, how we're going to put uh, safeguards around it. Well, we're very interested in that, this part of the world. Anthony? First of all, I'm a Sarawakian and a Malaysian, that's why I'm here, but funny enough, he invited me to come on this panel. So it's through Fritz from Netherlands that I'm here. Um, I'm happy to be here. My background is technology. I'm also a lawyer, so I'm combining the two professions I have to look at policy formulation, what people need to do to address AI issues, how to go about developing it, using it and deploying it. Nice. So I'm very excited to be here to share what I have. Okay, nice. But uh, Mike, our keynote speaker, uh, says that maybe we should have less lawyers. But I don't think you mean your kind of uh, legal brain and mind. But since you opened that door and you said you're Sorokin, from which parts of the world or from what? I'm actually born in Kuching, raised in Kuching, so this is my hometown. And uh, but since I went to Australia, I've never worked and lived in Sarawak. So you're a global nomad. I'm a global nomad. So when people say who are you, I say, I'm a global citizen. My my childhood hometown is Kuching. I live in Australia. I'm a president of IFIF, founded under UNESCO, based in Vienna. So I spend a bit of time in Vienna as well and in Europe. And sometimes you drop by billionaires' houses in America and go to their very AI-powered house. Is that I, true? I don't think we want to go there now with all this controversy. <laughs> okay. so uh, let's go to the 38,000 yeah. feet. Yeah. yeah, okay. Let's go up. Yeah. Okay. So AI, all this, so far away from many Sarawakians. Uh, so I think... Uh, I think that is what you think you're far away. Okay. I think uh, almost anything you do today has some kind of connection to AI. It is uh, when you use a grab to buy food or go to somewhere. There's an AI engine in there, I'm, no doubt about it. If you go on social media, if you want to find a date online, you are using AI technology. I think it's much more being used without you actually realizing it. And I also think that's a story how we should look at AI. Don't look at the technology, look at the application. What is the problem you're trying to solve? That's how I would bring it down from what's the technology. I mean, uh, although I am an engineer in my background, don't ask me to uh, fix a car. I can't do I know how to drive a car, I can't fix it. Same with AI. You have to understand how it works, how it can get you from A to B. Don't worry about changing the oil. That's it. Anthony, just when the time you were born, nobody much looks at quality of life. You were struggling for the basics where you were born. Fast forward now, in one lifetime that is your lifetime, you've seen tremendous things. Microalgae for sustainable energy in your hometown in Kuching, for example. So how will you look at that 38,000 feet question for Sarawak? So I'm very, very excited to be alive today. We are moving in the shift for humanity, as I said to Fritz, since the time we crawl out the caves. This is the threshold of a new beginning for humanity. The potential for AI is tremendous, are tremendous. But obviously there's a risk, so we need to mitigate the risk. And as I said to uh, Fritz, uh, if we can open on stage that T-shirt, AI for good, you think, how would Sarawak and the Malaysian get access to all this knowledge? In that one portal, you get hundreds of videos. If you get an internet and you get a computer, you can log on at any time of the day and night and learn about AI. It talks from A to Z, AI in education, AI in health, AI in sustainability, climate change, you name it, it's there. Yeah. It's all free. Yeah. 
So I would advocate to your audience, use that resource, yeah. because then in one week alone, your AI knowledge will have gone from zero to 40%. Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to actually uh, build on what you said uh, and about how the technology is moving. Uh, first of all, um, I remember when my grandfather died when I was passed away when I was 14. I, uh, at his grave, as the eldest grandson, I dis dis discussed, look, he was war born before the first plane flew. He was there, he was alive when the White Brothers flew. He was alive when the first man landed on the moon. So my perception was, all the great innovations have taken place. We live in a very boring uh, time. Yeah. I can only tell you right now, it's accelerating. Uh, the innovation is growing. The change is happening so quickly. But that also means that nobody knows what's happening. Nobody has that overall view. So if you think you do not know what, you're, what this is about, uh, don't be concerned because nobody has that. And that's also what Anthony said, there's so many great resources out there. Uh, so I would uh, start to educate yourself just by listening to the stories. People can tell you how they apply it. And maybe that will, uh, if you're creative, you can start to build on uh, what you listen. And say, oh, if that's if that what a technology can do, then I could also maybe apply it for that. So uh, it's a great opportunity and a great era just to be curious because anything you can imagine you're going to be able to build that can i add sure. to that Go ahead. i have five degrees yeah. in computer science in law wow. masters in it law and intellectual property and the legal practice i am challenged every day with this phenomenon called ai so if i'm challenged what would the ordinary people who hasn't been exposed like me in my journey feel about this. It is frightening. But we need to embrace it because this is the new future. Right the way. Right. We got to right ride the right way. Embrace the fear okay. and get on with it. This is a tool that you can get to head start if you haven't had access to it. All that knowledge is there. It's free. Yeah. I got it. So if in a few years time when I come back to your audience, have you used it? Have you gone from zero to forty yeah. percent? Okay. Because yeah. This is the way of life of the future. Yes. Everything you do will have AI in it. Yes. In your camera, in your car, yes. in your home, in your cooking, yes. when you wake up in the morning. So embrace it. It's not to be feared. Yeah. 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 It's a good thing. Yeah. And it's also something I think people realize who are looking for a job or looking for an education. Uh, oh, AI is going to take away our jobs. Uh, I think uh, the nuances. AI is taking away the jobs of people who don't use AI. And just on the job front, when I'm designing a PowerPoint slide for the tour, yeah. now I can turn on the button and say AI makes it look nice. And it would look at the topic and decide what's the best template for me. Got it. And if I can save all the time and I don't need to hire somebody to do a design, yes. and it's all done for me in three yeah. seconds, Correct. how much time would that save me? I understand what you say because I work in the media. So we didn't have what you are saying in the, the other age, before the age of AI. So when the platform economy came out, when Facebook, Google all came out, the work of the journalists in a country is made almost unimportant yeah. because our work will be available through the search engine of Google or available to be shared on Facebook, for example. We weren't prepared for that. No. So we were inundated with the tsunami anyway. So that's why people pick it now in Hollywood because, you know, they are imaged. They design songs before, but now you don't even need a human to design songs like Drake and, you know, The Weeknd. Yeah. So recently I spoke at the UN on that subject alone in March in Geneva. How do we cope with this AI, generative AI, chat GPT? And there is a whole thing we need to look at in terms of mindset. It's a tool which to help non-creative people like me to do creative things. It's given me need that power. But at the same time, it would be horrific for the creative people, the writers, the authors, and the actors because 
who is given permission for their likeness to be used forever in virtual movies without their permission. This is a concept that we've never thought about before, but now we have to face it. What is the fair way to go? The Writers Guild in Hollywood has just signed an MOU, they're about to agree, uh, but I think that's the first step because there are more issues going to come up to the front. Yeah? Just because someone is dead, are we allowed to use their image and sing on the stage and dance and things with them without their permission, with their consent of their families? Who owns all these things yeah. that's going to be created? I think if just uh, a critical question is permission. Because I wouldn't mind to be on stage as a hologram and having an AI engine do my presentation and I could just relax on the beach. Okay. But I give him permission. It, it, it is using the technology so without the permission. The Commons is one basic way to look at it. Uh, the yeah, Creative Commons yeah, ability to use yeah, other works. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I, 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 the discussion also we had uh, on, uh, at this conference is not uh, controlling the engine, but controlling the data which feeds the engine. Without the data, the engine is, is nothing. Okay. And you are still the owner of your own data. You are still the owner of... Uh, you, and so you, you should be the gatekeeper of what you give away. And to date, we are not the gatekeeper and people take it away from you. And I think that's where a lot of the problems uh, we discussed today come from. It's taken without permission, without consent. Can I be consent. a devil advocate sure. for a bit? Um, when social media first exploded, yeah. many people feel like we don't really have a handle on this new ability and technology but let's just run it and take it on the go. Years later, more than 10 years, now we see government having select committees calling the big tech. Singapore did it also, their government call up the big tech. Australia, now the politician lawmakers are aligning with news uh, journalists and yep. media and saying that if you want to use it for you, you pay them first. Where do you stand in this? Because sometimes people feel that the tech runs too far ahead before ethics uh, or whatever else is really considered? I'll start with this. Uh, in 2012, I believe the year, I was moderating a panel in Arizona with a lawyer group about why we're not regulating people like Facebook. The American lawyer said, we're not regulating because we want them to have the ability to innovate, create, yeah. experiment. Yeah. I, for one, I'm not using Facebook. Because as a lawyer, I can see the dangers, yeah. what we're facing now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying, but there are dangers. Mm -hmm. Why are we not talking about it now? Yeah. But now the world has woken up since the Facebook and the Google. Now we're saying with this AI, we're not going to be caught in the same paradigm now. We are now going to be in front. Okay. So let's look at the risks yeah. before I let you put in those things. Because we are no longer ignorant. We are now actually educated in social media. Yes. We now understand the risks. We now want to have committees looking yes. at those risks and panel yeah. to talk about it because we have learned from the past. Yeah. yeah. But let me, uh, and I want to actually go back to the same past because that question is easy to ask in hindsight. Right. Why didn't you do that all those years ago? Uh, I had the opportunity to sit down with Finn Surf last summer, uh, one of the fathers right. of the internet. Yes. Well, I've been to Malaysia. Ah, he, yes, he, he's been all over the world. So I was talking to Fenton, but, uh, and he's been asked this question a lot of times before, but ask again, did you anticipate, did you, were you aware what you created? Yeah. No, the answer is no. We never ever realized what our innovation, what, uh, our, what our invention was capable of. Uh, so I also think that uh, we shouldn't point the finger bl and blame, hey, why didn't you uh, put safeguards around that? Uh, because it, it was never imagined or dreamed, dreamt that it was going to be so big. And another figure in the internet, jo Jeff, Jeff Hinden recently resigned from Google. He's one of the founders or godfather of the AI. Okay. He resigned because he said he wanted the ability, the independence to speak out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's a very brave thing, and I acknowledge him for that, because we need people now to speak up. 
just because we invent something doesn't mean forever is going to do what we want yeah. because once it's released to the masses people from all walks of life the bad and the good can get their hands on it and develop things what according to their their ethics and their belief system and some which is not in parallel with what we believe in yeah. so I wish I could ask so much but I don't want to hold you guys too long but um, I want to draw out one thing that I listened to while you were talking on stage you make the point that maybe we shouldn't regulate AI maybe we shouldn't regulate the application of data but the data itself is where the start is and um, you were born here you will understand the bureaucracy a lot of our data personal or otherwise are with the government the government have ministries sometimes we wonder why can't the ministries just link all their databases so that you know we can be like estonia tomorrow but we know it's not that simple estonia only got their independence in 90, early and now i sat next to the speaker from estonia yeah. on the bus with fritz yeah. Yeah. they have only 1.2 million people yeah. I think Sarawak has more than that, two, about right? Two, yeah. two so yeah. we are different, but um, you, you're right. AI is more than AI. That's a topic yeah. we yeah. didn't talk about. It involves data, yeah. which is the oil for the AI. It involves Internet of Things because it's collecting the data from the field, from the buildings that we walked in. It's uh, collecting information from other emerging tech like blockchain, um, so it's not one technology, but it's a technology that embraces everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that when we talk about regulation, we've got to talk about are we regulating just AI or everything in the yeah. ecosystem which impact how we live, work and play. Yeah. It's too big for just one government or law set oh. of lawmakers to do. Yeah. And it's also so building on what Anthony said, this also means we uh, if you focus on AI uh, you're not you're you're not focusing on all the other technologies which are going to come in. So uh, we're going to talk about blockchain again. We're going to talk about quantum computing again. It's not on the table in today's discussion, but it's going to be on the table in next year's discussion or the year after. Uh, what I find constant is the data we're using, and uh, maybe that's. And I'm not saying that we should not govern the changing technology and all the technology we're getting but maybe uh, looking at the data will give us uh, a better more stable opportunity yeah. to control the technology let me choosing. close this yep. short discussion okay, but before you, you close so one new phenomena we know it's here already virtual reality the metaverse yeah. ai is part of that now in Hollywood, they're saying using my personality for the future virtual reality. So you can say the next few years is moving beyond AI to how do we manage the metaverse? How do we control the virtual, the virtual me? Am I allowed to live forever as Anthony Wong or Fritz? Who am I when I die? Is the personality of the data live forever and can be used as Anthony Wong to say he believes in this, 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 because based on his previous data, that's what he's supposed to so believe that's not in? not just a scientific question anymore. No, it's a question about what it's like to be human. What, that's deep. Yeah. yeah. Across cultures and religion. That's why I said those we words. We wars for those in things. That, yeah. Yeah. In our history, we fought wars because of those things. So how, how do you think we'll pay now? So one of my talks uh, last year was battle for control of data. This is the ultimate war, right? How do you control access to your data and every data in the world? Because that's going to reshape the world, the metaverse and the virtual reality. Yeah. So it's AI is a foundation, but we are looking at more other technologies. Some not even invented yet. But there's a certain things that limit us and one of it is the fact that the earth is burning. And that if we already have Greta Thunberg now who, who yeah. leaves school just to go and tell off the big leaders in Davos for example. So we're going to have more like that even with more passion. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to end with this because the one thing for sure that Sarawak has going for it is abundant supply of green energy 
And Mike Walsh talked about how if you even use five question with the chat GPT, he needs a bottle of water to pull it down. With quantum computing, oh my God, it's going to be even yeah. more. Oh, it. and there's enough water here as so well. So even though the technology could bring yeah. us that way, but do we yeah. want to kill the earth while yeah. doing it? So that balance, that yeah. SDG yeah. round thing, it's so easy to say it here, but when you are a multi-billion or trillion dollar company, when you're looking at markets and profit and power, how do we stand up to that? Well, I think, as Fritz said, individually, all of us have to stand up for it. What is right and what is wrong, yeah? based on our belief system yeah. and our, how we brought up and our culture. There's yeah. no uniform belief in the world, as you understand. What's appropriate for one country may not be appropriate for Sarawak or Malaysia. So that is a belief that we need to shape. That's why I say it's not so bad about regulating AI. It's about how we train the model for Malaysia and Sarawak. Yeah. Yeah. Using the data we have in accordance with our belief, our way of life, our culture and understanding. Yeah. 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 So for me that also means um, as you need to have influence what's happening, uh, set at the table, otherwise you're going to be on the menu. Well, if a young K-pop group called BTS can have hundreds of millions of followers around the world that didn't even understand 99% of the lyrics of their song, but because they are talking about humanity, talking about togetherness, I guess we do have hope. Because yeah. like you say, at the end of the day, it's us collectively. Yeah. In the new era, I guess, the individuals have no choice to be silent, but must speak out and state for the good. Can we conclude with that? Yeah, Fully we can. And, and you come back to Estonia, the Baltic states. They didn't go to be liberated by war. They hold hands and start singing. Eh? There you go. I hope the two of you do come back to Kuching for IDAC next year. But give me a few words that sum up your experience at WCIT and IDEX 2023 for the camera. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I've been asked the question uh, if I could compare uh, WCIT Penang last year and WCIT this year in Kuching. And I think that's the wrong question to ask. Right. Because coming from Europe and going to Malaysia, what amazes me is that Malaysia has the guts and has the power to bring this very big and relevant conference two years in a row to Malaysia. Uh, so for me, that's amazing because that tells something about the mindset that makes me curious. Why are we here again? And that means there's something happening here which makes me curious and that's why I come back. And uh, three words for me. I would say embrace and hope for a new beginning. By any chance you went to St. Joseph in Virginia? Beg your pardon? Are you, are you a St. Joseph? I you am there? a St. Joseph. There you go. Yeah. Can only spell quality and upbringing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.